I just like to know what gives you the most joy when you're working. Oh, huh? That's a good one. Um, repeat the question. Oh yes. Uh, what gives me the most joy when I'm working? Um, I think part part of it is the physicality of it, and I and I can say sort of the easy my my easy um, access. You know, if I do big work, which I haven't been doing for a long time, if I do do big physical, 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 that that is a works pretty much every time. Mm -hmm. And then there are smaller joys that come from, you know, piecing things together. And just seeing, you know, finding associations, one thing leading to another. It's kind of like, oh, surprise, oh, surprise. And I, you know, I'll have an intention, and then, oh, surprise, and let's, let's keep that. So it's, it's a little feedback loop. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm wondering, Katie, what um, what did you notice about either your feelings around the work or your feelings around yourself as you were putting the show together? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what did what did yeah? What did I notice about my feelings about myself as I was putting the show together. Um, that is a good question. I, I think I, I actually am appreciating myself for, <laughs> for actually having done more than I remembered having done. And so, and I'm mostly appreciative for the opportunity to, to have it all out because really, like a lot of artists, my work has been kept in corners or small spaces, and I, I just I put it away and I don't think about it. So it's it's nice to see the the continuity and the variety and the strength actually of some of my <coughs> some of my work is strong. <laughs> my 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 father has told me he was you know, on his, his deathbed, and, and he, he just, he said, you're strong. And I didn't, wasn't sure what he meant. So it's, so that was a good gift for him to say that. Um, I, I wanna say something else that just, just occurred to me um, that helped to make the transition from not knowing what my feelings were or, or how to connect my feeling with my work which was actually when I met Nima. And we were at a, um, a workshop for art educators, and um, we were working, I think, on trees or something. Wasn't it trees? A tree, tree image. And Nima had this hallway, <laughs> almost to herself, with tempera paints, where she was just doing these enormous, enormous, and my sketchbook was about this big. <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't, I didn't, first of all, who would have the moxie to, you know, put themselves out there in public in a hallway where people walking by would see the work? I mean, really, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, and then I got, I decided I wanted to work big like that too. And I, I got down, it was a few days later, I got down on the floor and was using tempera paint on just the kind of paper we do here. And I was splashing at it like a two year old, four year old. And I was, it was all turning brown, like poop. And I thought, oh, for him. And then I thought, okay, well, so there, okay, now I get to play with poop. And I did that. And I did <laughs> Um, and then, so, you know, kept filling more sheets with big papers. And this was before I had heard of Art and Soul, or, you know, this is, I hadn't been down here at, at that point. And I was smacking away at the paper and uh, began to, there was a kind of rhythm to it that I didn't know, 
didn't know where the rhythm was coming from. And suddenly, I began to discern a recognizable something coming toward me. And it turned out to be the quarry that I grew up on. So coming out of like just doing this, 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 and this, and I'm recognizing a place that I grew up on, how does that work? And that is what, that's what really the pivotal moment was. It was just that, oh, it just came out of me. And I just, and, and since then, it's just been, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so the parts have gradually come together. Any more? <laughs> Any questions from the Zoomers? They're on mute. Oh, they're on mute. Well, you can unmute the computer too, Robin, just so you know. Huh? Yeah, the computer's the computer. muted as well. How do I unmute my computer? Okay. If you have a question, you can unmute yourself. And anybody here? Hmm. Oh, yeah. That period that you were just talking about looking big and the poop and everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what work on the wall here is during that period? None. It's all after that. What's that? So all of your art is after that experience. E almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Except the figure drawings. No. The figure was after that. Yeah, the figure drawings was after that, I think. Yeah. So you were quite young. When I played with poop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was uh, no, I was. Uh, when I, I met Nima, I was forty something. Yeah. Don't you have some graphic pieces that go back to the seventies? What's that? Aren't there some earlier pieces? In the oh, it's true. Kind of yeah, some of the etchings, the graphic pieces, do go back to the seventies and eighties. Yeah, that's right. That back corner of that kit. Yeah. Yeah. These are, oh, okay. Oh, wait, someone's saying something. Hi. Uh, this, is, this is Susie. I, Hi, Susie. I hope you can hear me. I'm on, I'm on a Zoom. Yeah, okay. I see you and I hear can you. Me, can, you, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, good. Uh, there's just so much to say and so much to ask. And, and this is a real gift to have gotten the whole evolution of, of and, and I've seen so much of this, you know, because you and I have, have gone step by step in, in so much of our lives in this. So I have two questions. Yeah. Um, one is, I remember at one time you said, because we took the figure drawing classes together, that you weren't sure that it was such a good thing to be doing things so fast that, that you, you know, referred to, to, to George. And I, and I see that as you became more contemplative and were listening to yourself more. Um, and I wonder if you'd like to say anything more about that. Huh. That's neat. <laughs> I just hope that was clear. Okay, yeah. Um, so I said that I wasn't sure it was so good to do fast things so fast. Yeah, to, to you, 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 I mean, it may have been an offhand comment because George was sort of like zip, 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 yeah. faster, 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 because he wanted you to see the whole shape. But at least for me, and I, and I wonder if this had the same effect on you, I found that that habit of being very, very quick sometimes got in the way of actually sensing what's going on inside yourself. Oh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm not, I, I hadn't thought of it that way. I hadn't, no, I hadn't thought of it that way. And I don't think when I got out of George's class, that that was necessarily true, although there was something in the mechanics of, of working fast mm -hmm. that I think it's a, it, that's a kind of a, you know, a habitual way of starting. Um, yeah. but, but inevitably, even if I do start fast, you know, I, you, 
at some point you have to calm down <laughs> and look to see what you're doing and, right. and see what pleases you and what doesn't please you and you know what you want to eliminate and what you want to bring out. So, um, but it, I think for, actually I still believe in, in working fast at the outset because I think coming in, um, coming into something with a fixed notion about what it's going to be and trying to plant it, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's, you can't move from there very easily, at least I can't. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I just thought of it. I wondered if you have a feeling the person that started out years ago, before you recognized, before you had all these evolutions, what would that person be most surprised? What piece in the show would that person be most surprised that you created? Oh my goodness. <laughs> or some version of that. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, I think any of the California yeah. paintings. <laughs> <laughs> really, any of those, yeah. for sure. And, um, you know, I think, you know, that mandala at the end, you know, that big um, handwork piece. You know, it's basically a drumming piece, I think. Um, yeah. Hi, Dini, it's Deb. Hi, Deb. Hi. Hi. I'm wondering what you're going to be up to next. That's a good question. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> a long nap. Um, you know, I don't really, I don't really know. Um, but I, but I do feel as if the, the whole subject of water is will continue to be important and I, I do have a plan to do watercolors yeah. and I, I started that in uh, the fall to re to get <coughs> re-familiarized with watercolors and see if see if I could manage them a little bit better mm. yeah what was the last piece that you did in here that you worked on So we can connect that with what you're going to do next a little bit. Yeah, boy. <laughs> that's, I like to questions hard. That's not so easy, Jenny. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to help. Okay. <laughs> Always here to help. This one was a pretty recent one. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a four, uh, four watercolors that I did last year, but I think. I don't, I don't know, Jenny. You tell me. <laughs> a little collage. You said these timeout yeah, collages. Yeah, these timeout collages. Yeah. And I think, I think this big long blue one. Um, Within the last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Last year too. Yeah. I, yeah. The collage. The collages are way a lot of fun, but they're also very time consuming. So I have to be in the right mood. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. if I if I need to do something that requires physical movement, it's going to have to be something bigger than that. Mm. I have another Dee, yeah. this is Liz. I, I, see I just want to say thank you so much. And you had such a lot to overcome because <laughs> your father being such a consummate sculptor, I mean, you know, he was right. You were strong because you have found your way that is so different. And well done. Well, Liz. Well, Liz. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear friend Liz, who is a sculptor herself. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And actually, I mean, all of it, you know, I, I think I, I, to speak to my father, I mean, it was a, a weight. I mean, I did feel it as a physical weight for years. Um, almost, I had a, had a kind of a picture of myself being weighed down by the stones in the studio. You know, it was, it was that's just where I was emotionally, you know, pretty well practiced at, at depression. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, I, it was a tremendous gift. And he was, he was a person of such 
care and such integrity. And I learned, you know, I, I just learned a kind of a, an orientation of being, you know, he was extremely appreciative. And when I was, when I was younger, I was, one of, you know, this kind of critical, cynical, you know, I was nice on the outside, but mean on the inside kind of person. <laughs> well, not entirely, but, but I just remember, you know, it, it, it's just taken me years to understand the kind of appreciation that he had for everything and everybody. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm fine, you know, it feels like, thank heaven, I'm kind of growing into that. So, um, and he also said, you know, save, it's fine to be a perfectionist in your art, but, you know, he said, he said I'm a perfectionist, but I've learned not to, to uh, aim it at people. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good place, art's a good place for it. Mm. Hi, Francie. Yes. Hi, Dini. Hi. Here in Ashland. Yes. Um, I, I just wanted to say that it's so thrilling to see the studio with all your artwork. It, you know, I, I'm not there. I can't be there. And it's just incredibly thrilling to see all your artwork on the on the walls and how how some things, you know, on the screen when I only because I only see them on the screen. Um, they all look approximately the same size. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. it, it's, yeah. you know, it's like amazing to see like the seawalls behind you that it's so huge. And um, anyway, it's just really a thrill to, to be here with you. And thank you so much for everything that you've said today. Um, I really love hearing about um, your evolution and how important spirituality and um, that part of your life has influenced you and how it has helped you. It has manifested your evolution. So um, really just kudos that I bow to you. Thanks so much Thank for a, a wonderful, okay. wonderful show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For your enthusiasm. Okay. So are we, are we good? Yes. Let me just ask a question about, yeah. uh, you spoke of how the stones that you grew up with have weighted you down, and I was wondering if you could um, also speak to the male and female aspects of oh. yourself and also of the outer culture. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Nima's asking about the weight of the stones, feeling the weight of the stones, and to address the male and female part of our culture. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that growing up female in the 50s, you know, that, that having to, um, to look a certain way, walk a certain way, talk a certain way, what was popular, you know, um, I was always a little out of it. I never quite caught up with the, <laughs> never quite caught up with the um, ambient culture because I had I had friends like Liz and Susie, <laughs> and um, so we were always a little bit to the side. Um, but I, I I can speak to it in a kind of a metaphor. Um, when growing up. We girls swam in one quarry, which was the little quarry behind the house that I grew up in. And it was the house, and it was the one that showed up in that painting. Um, and the boys' quarry, the big boys' quarry, was up the hill, just um, outside my father's studio. Mm -hmm. So we didn't swim together. The girls got the little quarry, the boys got the big quarry. and. Um, as it turned out, the, the property that I kept after the death of both parents was my father's studio. And younger, that was not my choice. Had, it, had I had a choice to make at age uh, 50 or something, I would, have, I would have kept the small house and the small quarry, just much easier. And in a way, it still would be easier. But 
that meant bringing myself into my father's stone studio, and it meant um, looking at his quarry, which I was less familiar with. And I could not find the feminine in there anywhere. The, my, the house that I grew up in, in was really my mother. And after she died, I saw the tree outside, the, the windows in the back, and that was holding me. The tree was holding me, and she was in the house after her death. Um, so, and the, the pine trees, all of that was so familiar. When I got myself to the studio, I had to reckon with these shapes in the rocks and the different feeling of the water. And it wasn't until I, I rode around, I rode around the quarry and took a picture piece by piece, because it didn't have panorama at that time. So I got a 360 of the quarry, and I kept looking at the photographs and tipping them upside down and, you know, and I eventually I, I saw all these, what, whatever you could call guardian figures or, you know, spooks or, well, I don't know what you want to call them, but there was just shapes in the, in the, in the rocks and the water as they reflected each other, like totem poles. And I, I meant to bring that panorama for this show, but of course it's sitting under a pile of books. <laughs> so, um, so eventually I began to see, yes, there were female deities or guardians uh, reflect, you know, the, if I tipped the photographs up, in that I could kind of see, yeah, there's some breasts in there, and there's, yeah, I can, I can see that, okay. And then there's this big triangle. There are several big triangles, which are, you know, female symbols, and also Isha is triangle. So um, I began to um, feel more comfortable, more at home there. But it has been work. And, and, I, and, I, and it has been accepting a new life that's there that's not of me, and it doesn't have anything to do really with me. Um, so it's almost like having the, the female has met the male and has actually just left both behind. <laughs> Yes, I can. I just want to say, it's just so profoundly moving to realize that you and Nima found each other, <laughs> and that you are both the embodiment of art and soul, mm. or the living spirit of art and soul. Mm. Thank you both. is open for another hour uh -huh. for another hour mm -hmm. yeah 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 I, I have a question yes Hi, Hi, Kata. it's Kata yeah um, it, with pieces if there's pieces left over after the bidding is there any chance you would have a traveling show up on K-Band? Oh, Ooh. that's a nice idea. Yeah, that would be, that would be a big deal because I, I in a way, I, I, this, this is a, uh, leaving K-Band was also a way of leaving the pressure of K-Band. <laughs> and so I've been able to play here more easily than playing in the North. So we'll see, that's a good challenge. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. vote for it. Okay. <laughs> hey, this is selfish. I'm in, I'm in Cape Ann, so I'm, it's yeah. not entirely altruistic here. But. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sure. Dini, I have a short question. Which painting are you referring to as your, the Finland painting? Um, it's the, the uh, canvas with the flat looking water, that green, light green water in the middle. With the yellow sky. With the yellow sky. And the white water. It's a. <laughs> the one I was looking for online. Yeah. Yeah, this one. 
you see it? Yeah. Okay. If anybody wants a print, they could probably get one. Oh yeah, prints are possible. <laughs> prints are possible. So, yeah. Yeah. Can you, can I say one more thing? Yeah. So, um, my experience of, of, of you, Dini, over these years is um, your art making being wider than the two, 2D that we see on the wall. I mm. think of you as a mover uh -huh. and yeah. a singer and a voicer <laughs> and a meditator. So, um, I was curious to see in myself how I would experience the, the 2D. And uh, what, what I'm getting um, is a real sense of your multilingual self, mm. your language self, mm. mm -hmm. in the variety. Mm -hmm. And I'm also getting a lot of breath in, 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 the, in the work, which feels resonant with your breathing self that I know and your singing self. Mm. Did you have thoughts around including in the show something that was physical? Um, or sound like um. yeah yes I mean actually on the on the uh, CDs that that Milani burned there is a uh, some singing that I did with oh. my husband Kit and two other there's a quartet that we had so if you want to hear that that's on there okay. um, and we have a slideshow over here, but yeah, it's not moving right at the moment. But, um, and we did a workshop um, yeah. yesterday with Doris and Karen, Karen well, <laughs> where am I? Karen and uh, Amanda and Doris was there, Robin was there, anyway, which was movement and writing <coughs> and writing in response to the work. And that was a delight, actually. It was a delight to hear how people entered the, the work. So that's enormously valuable. I didn't realize how valuable that was. So, yeah, and there's some waltz music on. We could waltz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. So, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's probably, is it time for the Zoom to be over? Mm -hmm. It's about time. Okay. So <laughs> I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. even a week away. Yes. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs>